I was just wondering just overall what you think of the, the team's performance today. Probably. I, I don't, I don't. Um, you know, we, uh, we obviously have a long, long way to go. Uh, I think it's obvious if you watched us, um, it, it, you know, it, it's what it is though. I mean, uh, when you have as much change turnover from one year to the next, like we have so many new and young faces and players that, uh, that haven't played college basketball in some time, you know, like, uh, Jordan Brown, it's just, it's going to take take time. Um, and, uh, I'm thrilled that we were able to win the game here first and foremost. Um, I thought Jordan Brown was outstanding. You know, I, I don't really care who we play or where the game's played. If you can get, um, 19 points and 15 rebounds, including 13 defensive rebounds in 32 minutes, that's one heck of an effort. And, uh, you know, I commend Jordan because he's one of our team's hardest workers He's worked uh, very, very hard over the last year and a half, and it really showed today. I thought he was our team's overall best player. And uh, and I thought James Akinjo had a lot of good moments. Uh, there were some moments that, you know, he has to learn from. Again, hasn't he hasn't played in some time. But the two of those players for us tonight uh, really stood out, and uh, it's something that, that we have to build off, build off of. Steve, go ahead. Sean, along those lines, um, I thought I thought Akinjo looked a lot like Mark Lyons. Your comparison was very good. Just his aggressiveness, everything. Um, not a surprise to you, I'm sure. One and two. If you could talk about the one-two punch you have in Brown and Akinjo. Uh, I'm sorry. One one more time on the question. Yeah, just your thoughts on Akinjo and your comparison with Mark Lyons. Very aggressive. Can shoot it. Can get to the basket. Does a lot of things. Yeah, you know, James also has an inner confidence um, that our team needs. Uh, again, I, I thought he had some really great moments tonight. You know, we asked him to play almost the entire game. You know, I wish we could have given him a break, but uh, Jamal Baker was in such foul trouble that we just wanted to keep James on the court because of his experience. Uh, and, and I thought he wore down a little bit, you know, as we kept playing him without a break. But I mean, 19 points, he was four for nine from three. Uh, James has invested a ton of time in his shooting. I think he's an improved shooter and more than capable of having nights like he had uh, here, here tonight. But James Akinjo and Jordan Brown both had uh, very good games. I, I thought Jordan Brown's game, though, was just outstanding. Again, 19 points. 15 rebounds, 13 defensive rebounds. Uh, that's that's one heck of an effort in your season opener by him. Any other questions for Coach? Bruce, go ahead. Sorry, Sean, if you can hear me, uh, I was wondering if you could address Kerr's situation when you might expect him back if, you know, or if it's completely unknown at this point. And also without him this week, uh, how has that changed what you, you're, or know, with what you've been doing with the point guards in general? And uh, you mentioned Jamal obviously adding to that tonight by being in foul trouble, but how has that kind of worked without Kerr in the mix? Yeah, you know, I mean, Kerr will return as soon as his uh, championship tournament is over with. Uh, if he was eligible to play, he, he wouldn't have uh, left us to participate with the national team. But because he's not eligible at the moment to play, uh, I thought it was right for both him and his family in Estonia, the country. You know, we allow our players to play on USA basketball and give them their opportunity. Uh, Kerr also, des he, he uh, deserves uh, his own opportunity. And so we let him go back, but he'll return right at the beginning here of December, uh, at the conclusion of his tournament, he's finishing up the semester, uh, just like all of our players are. And that's the other part, you know, our, our, our uh, academic life right now is on zoom and you can do it really anywhere. So that also, uh, you know, led to us allowing him to go back to play for his country because academically he's able to really do the same things 
uh, back home as, as he could do here in Tucson. But we're excited to have him back. You know, we're hopeful that he can be eligible to play. Uh, he's a big part of our team. He's a very good shooter, uh, playmaker, gives us more depth. I thought one of the things that really stood out tonight is, you know, we've tried to keep it simple for our young players, and uh, we have to allow Ben Matherin to, to play the two some so that we could have a lineup of uh, Ben playing with Dale and Terry. Um, they could play together, but it's usually when we go small, uh, allowing Ben to play some two. You know, tonight you saw Jamal get in foul trouble, and you're right, without Kerr. And then you have Jamal really was, was uh, hit with foul trouble almost the entire game. We almost needed another guard. And, uh, but that's the problem just with, with the way this is. You can only do so many things. So uh, we'll try to implement that into our style and, uh, and, and let, let Ben get, get maybe some more opportunities at that shooting guard position, uh, more so than, than we have to this point. Is that kind of the plan, though, at the, at the three to go with one of those bigger wings, uh, Ben or Dalen, uh, you know, as opposed to a th three smaller guards, maybe with Terrell mixed in there or something? Well, you know, we played uh, – we, we have the ability to play with those three smaller guards. You know, Jamal was obviously in very bad foul trouble here tonight. So we, that wasn't in the cards. And that's why James played 38 minutes. And, you know, Terrell played uh, with James quite a bit. But, you know, having uh, the ability to have – Ben Dalen with two bigs in the game. Uh, I thought tonight taught us that it gives us more depth and um, allows us to, you know, maybe play two of our younger players who are only going to get better. And, you know, Azulis Tabellis, Ben Matherine and Dalen Terry, they're going to continue to grow and develop with every practice and every game. It's just, it's finally good that they had a chance to get out there and play and, um, you know, now uh, we just have to continue to get them more experience. Ryan Kelly, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to ask you what you thought of the way Ben played tonight and also Terrell Brown. He had uh, seven assists at, at Seattle. He was more of a scorer, but what kind of role do you see him having on this team? Yeah, Terrell, uh, you know, he's a very good defensive player. He's a, a, a really a, like almost like having a second or third point guard on the court. Uh, I thought he had two or three great passes tonight. You, know, you have seven assists and two turnovers, that's very good. Uh, he didn't score tonight, but uh, but he'll, he'll be fine in that area. You know, we need him to be a great playmaker and an excellent defensive player, take some of the burden off of Jamal, some of the burden off of James. Uh, like you mentioned, Terrell gives us depth at the point guard position. If James is out of the game, uh, Terrell is more than capable of being our point guard. He does it almost every day. So I thought he showed some uh, some good things out there tonight, and uh, something that uh, that he can build from. Steve, go ahead. Just your thoughts on the sideline and the and the atmosphere. How was it for you? Does it feel weird? And then maybe wearing the mask and and kind of being restricted. I don't know. How was it? Yeah, it, it feels uh, very very strange. Um, you know, you don't you don't know until you go through it, but. Uh, you know, being somebody who's watched these types of events only on TV, it doesn't feel as different for the viewer uh, at home. But uh, for the participants, for the players, the coaches, the officials, it's much different, much different. Uh, uh, surreal, uh, really, really is. But does, it make, does it make you less vocal or does it change how you coach in terms of verbal? No, I mean, the mask is what it is, and I mean – Sometimes you can't breathe when you have it on. I mean, you, you know, it's just, it's, it's terrible, but uh, it's what we're all required to do. And uh, it's what, it's what I thought I did a pretty good job of keeping, uh, keeping that on tonight. We'll see. Thanks. Ryan, Long, go ahead. Hey, um, Christian Coloco struggled a little bit today. Uh, I was wondering what you think of his performance in today's game. We well, had nine rebounds in 22 minutes, including five offensive rebounds, which I thought was outstanding. But, you know, Christian's a young player. I, I didn't think that he approached the game with great confidence. Uh, he's one of our team's best defenders. Uh, he struggled tonight in that area. We need him to be better. We need him to be more confident. We need him to be more aggressive. Uh, we started him because he's one of our team's five best players. 
He's had a very good fall, but uh, I, I didn't think that the way he practiced necessarily carried uh, over into tonight's season opener. But you have to understand how young of a player he is, how inexperienced he is. He's going to continue to improve. I have no doubt about that, but uh, we need him to be better, and I think he will. Bruce, go ahead. Yeah, Sean, just following up on Kerr, I was wondering, I mean, is are you definitely is he definitely coming back right away after the tournament? Or or if you don't get any word from the NCAA, is it possible uh, you know, that, that he might just stay for a while or maybe even stay over Christmas? Or how did you guys leave it? I mean, I thought I did a great job answering the question, but I'll give you his number if you want to encourage him to stay in Estonia. Uh, you're more than happy to call him Bruce. Uh I feel like the, the straightforward answer is, as I've already answered, uh, he's coming back at the conclusion of, of the tournament. Okay. Well, I just, I know there, I, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have the NCAA's phone number. Uh, they don't tell me uh, what they're going to do two weeks from now as it applies to amateurism and eligibility. And all that we can do is uh, send Kerr home to compete for his country uh, talk to him every day and, uh, you know, wait on his return. Uh, I guess he has the option of not returning, but, um, you know, again, I, I can't really give you um, a wholehearted evaluation or answer of his mindset at the conclusion of the tournament. Wow. Job and I wish he was eligible. Um, we believe that, uh, that he could or should be, but you know, that, that's not up to me to comment on. I'm the coach of the team and we'll let our compliance office and Kerr and his family deal with that, with that issue. But we have our fingers crossed that at some point he can join us, you know, like four or five other players from uh, Europe that came here the same way he did. Yeah, I know. I understand. I just, I know I was listening, for example, on a ESPN podcast, Seth Greenberg actually said, Sean lost his best recruit. He signed. He went home to Estonia and signed a pro contract. So I'm wondering, you know, there's a lot of kind of buzz out there or, or uncertainty, but it sounds like, you know, from what you're saying, then it's pretty clear cut. Yeah. Okay. And could, would you also be able to kind of address where Iris stands at this point and has he come back to practice at all? And, and, and uh, do you have any estimate on when he might be able to return? Yeah. Ira suffered a concussion, uh, you know, almost three weeks ago, um, obviously, um, you know, the health of all of our players is just paramount, not just COVID related, but, you know, they, they can get injured as well. And so we're being very smart with Ira. Uh, this isn't his first concussion. So we just want to make sure through the doctor's care and Justin Kokoski and Ira that he can become symptom free. He's at that point now. And uh, we're going to implement him now back into what we do slowly so that, you know, he hopefully doesn't have any of those symptoms flare up. And, uh, you know, we missed him tonight. You know, one of the reasons we missed him is just, you know, you can't have enough guys that have played in games before. And Ira, you know, the one thing about him is he's very, very physical. He gives us depth inside. What's the best thing that he does? Rebound, both on offense and defense. And, you know, bringing somebody in who's 22 years old, who's been through these things could have been beneficial to our team tonight and moving forward. So uh, he's going to rejoin us here uh, almost, almost immediately, but you know, I don't have the answer of when he'll be able to play in games simply because I don't know how he'll respond towards uh, respond towards, you know, being back out on the court. All right. Thank you, coach.